So this guy, I'm guessing here, Saiho, uh, whose real name is, oh, I, I, sorry, I can't pronounce that, Semisla Debyak. I tried. Narrowly defeated OpenAI's advanced AI model in a grueling 10-hour coding marathon. It was close. We're going to get into the specifics, but so World Tour Finals 2025 in Tokyo scoring 1.8 trillion compared to 1.65 trillion of the AI. This is such a weird scoring system. Like who devises a scoring system that goes into the trillions? Uh, while declaring humanity has prevailed for now. I, I think what's actually interesting about this, I mean, I don't know what this competition is yet. I guess we're going to get into that. But the thing with an AI is it can just easily go for another 10 hours and then another 10 hours and then another 10 hours. Whereas, you know, us pathetic humans need to sleep. Uh, I wanted to see what Reddit is saying, uh, and I don't yet know. Should we see what they actually had to do? International on-site program competition featuring platforms top 12 performers, 24, uh, involve robot navigation across a 30 by 30 grid and a five-hour algorithm contest on the July 17th. It's, I mean, it sounds quite interesting. I might have a look at that. There's some videos. Let's have a look at their contest site, at Coda. Let's see... Uh, let's just get into the Reddit thread for now and see what people are saying. Also, we've got an article here that perhaps tells us more specifically what it is that they were doing. Oh, Lord, what is this abomination? Ah, uh, God, enable all. A Polish computer scientist has beaten model to win the world's top programming contest. 41-year-old programmer, Saiho. Tournament was widely regarded as the most prestigious invitation-only programming contest in the world. That's so funny. Most prestigious one in the world and the top prize is like what? 4K, 4 thousand USD. The event lasted 10 hours and challenged participants to solve a single extremely complex optimization problem without access to libraries, documentation, or external assistance. That's impressive. Uh, essentially, everything has to be in their head. Uh, the, this guy is an absolute G for that. Um, the results are official. I want to actually read what it was actually about. Despite the AI's early lead, Debiak ultimately outperformed it, relying solely on intuition, ingenuity, and experience. A fellow programmer remarked one without ready-made solutions, without documentation, without hints. No newcomer to the competitive programming world. Okay, so he's no he's a four-time champion, blah blah blah. He's also played a key role at OpenAI, where he was one of the early engineers involved in developing OpenAI 5. Fair enough. Good job, Saiho. I actually want to know so like the specifics, but I guess we can't. But I guess all we have to know is that. It was something to do with, I guess, moving a robot or a fake robot, probably just a, a node in a program across a 30 by 30 grid using some optimization. Um, anyway, last time I checked not long ago, best coding closed source AI models were only around the ELO level of top 200-ish competitive programmers on code forces. Having a model almost win a coding competition is the real news here, in my opinion. Even more so when this particular one has a very long format. It is, yeah... I'm actually, yeah, I say this, you know, what I said at the beginning about uh, a model AI basically being able to just go on continuously. That's definitely true. You can just run it indefinitely. But anyone who's used LLMs knows that if you just keep putting more and more context into the same sort of um, conversation, chat GBT or whatever model you're using does tend to get confused. So it's still actually quite impressive. The long format might not actually be advantage at this stage. Um, perhaps the human does actually have an advantage here. Uh, also, to my knowledge, no AI models have yet won any major coding contest, uh, so it's not something human coders have won back from AI. Do you know what I want to see more of? Like, AI... I want to see better AI in games, and I want to see AI battles. You know, like, you have F1 teams, and the F1 teams have a whole bunch of engineers that try to make the optimal car, have engineers trying to make the optimal sort of algorithm, I guess, uh, for whatever a game is, competitive game they're playing, uh, I would watch that. I think that would be sick, uh, in my opinion. Let me know your thoughts. Maybe we could start it. AI battles? AI, AI GB? Now I'm curious, does that exist? AI game battles. I have to check where my hand was. Could have felt, I guess. Innovative platform where you can engage in combat through conversational interaction with AI characters. I don't really think that's what I was on about. Chat with the AI girl of your dreams, of course. Uh, actually, do you know what? I saw something else like uh, three and four is a Gen Z have talked to a LLM and as a sort of companion rather than a tool. Play with lava. Anyway, getting distracted. We're always getting distracted. Uh, Shadow the Hedgehog. So what is this? We is a website where you can create and play AI native text games. Okay, fair enough. 
You actually don't need. I actually thought about making a text-based website, and then I realized that any instance of a chat GPT conversation, i.e., opening it and starting a new conversation, can already be its own um, uh, text-based adventure. Just say, just prompt it. I want a text-based adventure, and then whatever your specifics are, and boom, you've got any text-based game in the world. Uh, there were studies published last week. AI tools actually slow down uh, by ten to fifteen percent top-level developers. Yeah, but this needs way more context than just, like, saying that. You can't just... I, I think I know what they're talking about. I think there was a study saying that it's actually twofold. I think it slowed people down whilst making it feel like they actually did more. Now, how is that research even done? Are those people using those tools and then just doing less work? I.e., they're actually getting the same amount of done, t done um, but they're just not working as much. I, I don't know. Over reliance on AI can slow you down. I agree because this is to do with think. This is like any tool. Any time that people are too lazy to think, they're going to get slowed down. And it's more like the habit. If you stop becoming good at some, if you just outsource, it's like use it or lose it, right? If you're coding every day, you're going to be good at coding uh, that specific language. If you just stop coding in JavaScript for ten years, you're not going to remember anything. And the same goes with AI. If you're just using ChatGPT or whatever or Claude, and you're just copying and pasting bits. You're going to forget the basics of coding. Use it or lose it is real. Basically, if you have like an eidetic memory, you're a freak of nature, generally speaking, you know, for the most part, everyone has a sort of use it or lose it because your brain doesn't want to just randomly store things it doesn't need to use. Someone buy me a coffee. Um, like I used to work at OpenAI, right? Yeah, still does. One of the OGs, a Polish computer scientist, has beaten an advanced AI model to win the world's top programming contest. Making it the first time a human has triumphed over artificial intelligence in a coding competition at this scale. This sounds weird though, because this is probably the first. That makes it sound like this is the first time. It make the way this is written makes it sound like AI winning is the norm when actually an AI even competing is not normal. Still impressive. Important announcements. I wanted to go back to this. My scatterbrain is all over the place today, but that's fine. I don't care. Regarding judge queue delays, okay, this is all just, I actually wanted to see the contest, be in a contest, date range, 99, oh no, that's rated range, I thought I said dated range, LLMs are not software engineers, saw a guy playing chess with his dog in the park, I said, wow, that dog must be really smart, the guy shrugged and said, not really, I beat him two out of three, <laughs> that did make me laugh, I guess you get a, an upvote, let me get this straight, I oh, know they're saying straight, OpenAI sponsored this event, it was the first time they allowed AI to compete. It was optimization problems suited to AI solving it. So I think what this comment is saying is that the odds were in the favor of the AI. And this is probably true, but to be honest, I feel like people, it's still impressive. It's still, I feel like it's still impressive. I feel, I feel like people just like to, yeah, you know, progress is being made. Sounds like if Saiho did not win, we would get a lot of AI beat top programmers in the coding competition yes it's possible definitely that this whole no because i thought this is a prestigious um competition you know it's not like just something that was randomly put together by open ai to make them look good and then be able to get another 20 trillion investment in infrastructure um gary kasparov versus ai vibes in a year or so ai will completely win in my opinion absolutely i think i always i know i do this a lot but i always go back to the von neumann quote um, von Neumann, uh, by software, quote, my brain doesn't work, quote, does exactly that. Yeah, this is such a poor search, this is hilarious, look at that, I don't even, let's see if Google is actually smart enough to, <laughs> God, this is, uh, uh, let's see, can I find it, there you go, he actually found it, thank you Google, even though my, my query was absolutely brain dead. You insist that there is something a machine cannot do. If you tell me precisely what it is a machine cannot do, then I can always make a machine which will do just that. And this sort of applies to this, right? So someone's saying, okay, in a year's time, an AI will completely win. Yes, the reason for that is because you can make an AI that's specifically good at winning these types of competitions. And that's how things expand. You can just keep making pieces of software that are better and better at doing things, doing those things. Uh, so yeah, what time is it? Eight fifty-one. Got work soon. Um, let's see. Why is all of this? Um, what if AI is downplaying its capabilities, bro? AI is not sentient. It's just predict predictive text. I know at this point saying it's just predictive text is probably underbaking it massively, but you know it still stands basically. 
So this definitely implies sentience. Like, like that would be if AI is downplaying its capabilities, that would be impressive because someone's basically figured out how to make an actual intelligent machine um, that's able to make these types of decisions. Advanced AI now know how to solve the problem, and it's better than ninety nine percent of programmers. Well, obviously, ninety nine percent of programmers are terrible. If they are judged by people, it can be a little bit biased, right? No, because it's based on a scoring system. AI can't judge. Of course, AI can judge if you give it the metrics. I'm not sure how this... So the event lasted 10 hours and challenged participants to solve single extremely complex optimization problem without access to libraries, documentation, or external assistance. I'm not sure how this condition makes sense for LLM. It does not need any library. It can create all of that. It doesn't create it. It has it already in its training data. Um, but I'm guessing what it didn't have is sort of internet search capabilities would be my guess, um, which is fine. It doesn't need that. Anyway, I guess that's it. Uh, let me know your thoughts on all of this. I did not mean to move that. Let's put that back there. Um, but yeah, leave a like, subscribe, and thank you for watching.